Hello, in this video I will illustrate the results of our paper on the neural tangent kernel, which makes a link between artificial neural networks and kernel methods. We start with a fully connected neural network of any depth and with a Lipschitz nonlinearity. We gather all parameters of the network into one vector theta, which is initialized randomly and then trained with gradient descent. But the cost is non-convex, which makes the analysis of the training very difficult. Instead, we study the network function f theta, which maps the inputs to the outputs. We will fully characterize the behavior of f theta in the infinite width limit, when the number of neurons in the hidden layers grow to infinity. In this limit, we already know that the network function has a Gaussian distribution at initialization. Here I have plotted 20 random initialization of the network function on the unit circle. Let's now take one single initialization and observe the effect of one step of gradient descent on a single data point x0. We see that the network function not only moves at x0, but at nearby points too. If we now plot the difference between the two time steps, we see a smooth spike centered in x0. What is even nicer is that this difference is almost the same for different initialization. And as we increase the width of the network, they become even more similar. Furthermore, this behavior is linear. If we add another data point, the two spikes simply add up. What we have observed can be nicely described by a kernel, the tangent neural kernel. It is defined in terms of the derivative of the function with respect to the parameters, and it describes how modifying the network function at a point x will influence another point y. This kernel depends on the parameters. It is therefore random at initialization and varies during training. However, in the infinite width limit, it converges to a deterministic limit at initialization and its rate of change during training goes to zero. This explains why the effect of one step of gradient descent was so similar for different initializations. We now have all the tools to fully describe the behavior of the network function during training. For example, for least square regression on three points, we start with a random Gaussian process and then follow the kernel gradient of the cost with respect to the tangent neural kernel. Kernel gradient descent is simply a generalization of gradient descent to function spaces. Because the cost is convex in function space, the function will converge to the minimum if the kernel is positive definite. Even for a network of finite width, we can predict the trajectory of f theta given its initialization by approximating it with kernel gradient descent with the limiting kernel. For least where cost, f theta follows a linear differential equation. This implies that its distribution is Gaussian not only at initialization but at all time steps too, and we can compute the mean and covariance during training. Of course, these theoretical results have important implications for the convergence and generalization of neural networks. Check out our paper for more details.